it's difficult for you to say something. So I was very happy here till the gentleman came up here and gave the pledge. Because in that pledge, and I was quietly going through all the words, he had covered pretty much whatever I wanted to say. So if you all pledge to do that, um, you all would be at a disadvantage standing over here. I, I appreciate that pledge, that's what I'm trying to say. Fantastic, if you're all going to start, very rarely have I seen a function start with a pledge, and a detailed pledge at that, and uh, that really says something about the organization which you all belong to. My address today to you all is not going to be about anything technical in HR. That's not my area. You are all specialists in that, and so I am not going to preach to the converted. My job is to give you some impressions of HR that I have learned in my experience in being a CEO of a company, and what a CEO, assuming I am a typical CEO, would expect from a HR leader. The HR head of the team in any company is the closest to the CEO. Two reasons. One, normally in, in most SME companies, and in SME I expand that to even a thousand crore company, the admin function in the company is normally a uh, seen as a corollary to the HR function. So it is usually the same person who holds both. And you all know admin function is essentially a management function. So the HR team and the HR senior professionals end up being quasi-management in their thought process and in their approach in the company and in the way management views them. Second, end of the day, even at the CEO level, going beyond HR, the managing director of a company's job is essentially people management. At my level, 25% of my time, if I were to actually structure and see what I do, 25% of my time is only handling people issues and creating growth strategies for the company based upon like the people who are working for us. The other 75% would go into ops management, future planning and uh, uh, public engagement. So if you see that 25% of what I do is essentially HR, naturally there is a synchrony between the management of a company, the top management, I'm talking about the managing director, chairman, executive director, with the HR team. So in that sense, a CEO and identifies quality in the HR which he would actually like to see in himself or which he actually tries to project. And that is the importance of HR, more than the operational roles which are like, you know, manufacturing, finance, um, marketing and sales, uh, which directly impact your profit and loss. It is the HR role which is the most important one from the perspective of the management because HR is in a sense quasi-management. Managing machines is very easy, very structured, predictable, reasonably predictable. Managing people is not. It's an art that grows over time. So what, in my opinion, makes a great HR profession? If you look at some of the top functions of a HR professional, let me go into the reactive and proactive approaches, what we generally see. You would all agree with me that the first function is to recruit the right person, which most HR professionals do. That's what a good professional does. A great professional is one who actually proactively identifies the gaps in his own organization without actually waiting for somebody to come and tell this is the kind of resource I want, to proactively go there and identify the gaps and then inform the organization that these gaps exist within the organization. A, great, a good HR is somebody who exposes organizational culture. Organizational culture is probably one of the most defining elements of an organization and it is usually left to the HR after the managing director to talk about organizational culture and to create an organizational culture that permeates within the organization. A good HR would do it. A great HR would actively define and when necessary force change in an organizational culture to better reflect what the organization really stands for. I hope you're trying, you're able to understand the difference I'm trying to make here from the eyes of a CEO. The difference between a good HR, I'm not talking about average HR, I think you're all across that stage. Talk about a good HR and a great HR. A good HR will be an exposure of organization culture. A great HR would be a creator of 
of message in culture. A great HR would lead and not follow. A great HR would go beyond the norms of his profession and secure the organization from all threats, whether it's related to people, whether it's related to technology, whether it's related to the markets. A great HR, a good HR, would act as a bridge between management and employees. A great HR would be somebody who's independent and acts as the fair voice of an employee. What I am trying to say is that in, in our process of going forward and doing the things that we normally do in life, we sometimes stick within the boundaries of rules and we stick within the boundaries of what we call as the defined function that we have. And yes, if you stick within those boundaries, you are usually good. But if you want to be great, you want to stand outside, you need to be proactive in going and doing things that are beyond your brief, taking the ownership and hence the leadership of the organizations that you work for. So what do I mean by leadership? You can say like, you know, it's the art of inspiring, getting people to go do that extra mile, run that extra mile for you. I would say it is the art of inspiring people without the use of or power or hierarchy. Can you actually influence people to follow your thought process? without the enforcement of power that you possess. That is the true mark of leadership. Ask yourself when you go back, I'm just going to throw two or three questions. Try to benchmark yourself on these questions. It will give you an idea of where you are and possibly a, a direction of where you can get. In your organization, how many of you are part of the succession planning of senior HODs as a risk mitigation strategy. In any organization, everybody knows that there has to be a risk mitigation strategy of having somebody to follow the people who are already in power. There has to be a strategy. You can't just one day wake up and say, okay, he's gone, now let's go find somebody else, right? There has to be a strategy. As a HR professional, are you part of that in your organization? Don't you think you should be? A good benchmark of leadership. Will you be missed if you were to retire tomorrow? Will you be missed in your organization? Will people come and cry? So when one is retired, would, would there be a teary farewell or a celebration in the dance? No, think about it, right? Enforcement with power in your hand is always there. That those are the tools that we are actually given to actually create systems. But true leadership and, and, and charisma comes when you actually are able to do things without those tools. Will we be missed? This is a question that every leader needs to ask himself. Will I be missed when I leave? Will people think that I have been a positive change in their lives? Or would they think like, you know, thank God this world has gone? Think about that, just leave some thoughts. How many of you do gap analysis in your organization without a request from the operational heads? It goes on to the previous uh, point that I had said about being proactive. These for me are the things that differentiate a great HR from a good HR and every CEO wants to have a great HR to work under him. To be able to execute things in this form, there are five essential characteristics I think are, think are, is, are uh, important in a person and I would just like to share those with you. The single most important ability that you need to have to not only be a great HR but to be an essentially a leader in any organization is to have an absolute sense of fairness or perceived fairness. And that's why I was saying, I, it was, the minute the gentleman came and gave the pledge, that's it, gone. My speech is over. So I'm just repeating what he's saying. A sense of perceived fairness or an absence of bias 
is absolutely essential for you to function as a leader and I would I would I cannot emphasize that enough as to how that's important. For that, you need to have as many standard operating procedures and written rules as possible in the organization. The HR leader needs to be the voice of everyone. In many organizations, you are seen to be the voice of the management. But you need to have an independent stand where you seem to be the voice of the employees and the voice of the underprivileged as well. Please guard your independent thought with all the strength you have. Even object to the management if you believe that your thought process is right. That perceived sense of fairness is what, first of all, catapults you from being just a functional HR to being a HR leader. The second ability, which is very important, is your ability to communicate. The core feature of, an, of, of a leader is your ability to communicate. Because without communication, how can you share thought? How can you create culture in an organization? Storytelling and legends are very important in creating organization culture and the HR head needs to be the primary driver of creating those stories and legends and in this sense be an excellent communicator in getting the culture across in the organization. Empathy, I think we will all agree here, there are no surprises here. Empathy is really what makes you different and what's going to hold those bonds in, in troubled times in a fast-paced world that we are in. Technical competence in legal, administration, and other areas, you will have to keep pace with the times. Most important, if you are a HR leader, try to be exemplary. Leaders are beacons who are under constant scrutiny. You are always in the limelight. People are looking at you. People are trying to see, okay, what is his personal philosophy? Does his personal philosophy match with what he actually says or the way he does? If there is a discordance between your personal philosophy and what you expose, people will not believe in you. So it's very important that personal conduct and bearing is the simple most, single most powerful tool that you bring in in discharging your function. So again, quickly going, perceived fairness, communication ability, empathy, technical competence, and being exemplary are the characteristics that I, in the last 20 years of my experience, have seen that differentiate a great HR leader from an average one. A lot of times, connect, connecting to people, and I've just used the talk with a little anecdote and, uh, and, and close my speech. A lot of times, connecting to people is, uh, is very easy. It's just that most of the time in life we have a habit of making things very complicated. When I was um, the CIA chairman, I had, there was a HR forum um, on the CIA where I invited Dr. Shailendra Babu, you know, the ADGP uh, presence, as the chief guest. And uh, he had come here to Coimbatore and uh, morning he was having breakfast with me in my house and then he looks at my wife and asks, uh, how is Sushan? Sushan is the name of my son. So we are all completely blown. Dr. Shailendra Babu is Sudarshan's name. Not bad. Half the time, most of the people forget our name itself. And uh, I thought, fantastic, what a great man. Like, you know, okay, he must be really liking me and all this stuff. So he goes there, and in, in his inaugural address, in that uh, event, that's the chief guest address, he was talking about, he said, I have certain simple rules. What I do, whenever I know, meet somebody and thing like that, I find out about their family name and thing. Immediately I go back, I write it down. The next time I go meet them, I just say like, you know, how is your child's name by the, uh, by the name? And he says, inevitably, everybody is completely blown. And I say, okay, oh, that's a secret. He said, okay, fine, you probably didn't know. But anyways, jokes apart, how do you connect to people? Because we are all in the business of connecting to people, right? We are in the business of connecting to people, making people believe in what we say, making people believe in a particular way of looking at life. Connection to people is very, very simple. Right. What usually stands in the way is our ego and sometimes like you know our short-sightedness in the ways that we do and sometimes a little less of heart than what is supposed to be that. If we can change that, if we can connect to people, you would be really wonderful leaders and, and you would actually do a fantastic job for the organizations that you work in. 
I'm very glad to have been here to share some of my thoughts uh, in this August audience. Uh, like I said, I'm not a specialist, so I thought I would just talk about some experiences that I give a different perspective uh, as a CEO uh, into what I think the HR practice should be. I hope you all have a uh, wonderful day of fruitful deliberations and um, have a very pleasant time in the Firewood Institute. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, sir. You have given a lot of things for our HRs here to ponder on.